Hi, my name is Eddie Jackson Jr. and this is Rio True Street Crime. I want to answer a few questions from the viewers. I really don't get to it because I don't really read messages and read all that. I've told y'all all before. Michael Jackson said, if you read it when it's good, you're on top of the world. And if you read it when it's bad, you feel about this big so I don't partake in reading it. But <clears throat> Every now and then they'll pass me a message they think I should answer with you people. And so I'm going to do a little Q&A for a minute. One thing I want to say to y'all about numbers, man. One of the questions came about Ed Martin. Let me say this first of all. Carl Martin is Ed Martin's son. Carl Martin wrote a book about the whole 5-5 five, five thing. And for what I understand in the book, Carl Martin can really explain it to you better because he was a part of it and Ed Martin's son. I've heard that Chris Weber, Jalen Rose, the only person who paid Ed Martin back the money he loaned them was Track the Trailer. Now that's what I heard. And anything else you want to hear about that, Carl Martin can tell you about it. So yeah, I knew about Chris Weber, supposed to be old. Mr. Martin, all that money, Jalen Rose, all of them, except for Track the Trailer, was the only one I hear paid him. That's on that. That's, that's one Q&A from that. Let me say this to you also. I know this is not going to get no hits, but I have to speak the truth. And it's not really always about hit. It's about you all hearing the truth. And it really doesn't matter to me if I get a hit or not. But on this, I want to start off by saying, if you don't know your history, you are doomed to repeat it. If you do not know your history, you're doomed to repeat it. So don't learn it, because you're going to live it again if you don't want to learn it. You can live it and learn it. Take your pick. Let me say this to all of you all, so you all understand where I'm coming from. Christianity. Let me break it down to you one more time. When the white man came to Africa, we owned the land. And the white man came to Africa with that holy Bible. That's what he came to Africa with. And when he left Africa, he owned all the land and he gave us the holy Bible. That's what you have today. You don't own no land in Africa. He gave you the holy Bible and stole all your land by using that slavery guide to take you right into slavery. That's what he did. You have never heard of the Holy Bible. And now every time you turn around, I want you all to check out, I am not your Negro. It is something we all need to see because it tells you these black Negro preachers have led us into slavery. They have guided us there exclusively for the white man. Everything in that Bible contradicts itself. They'll sit there and read to you how you should commune with wine and unleaded bread and then give you the bait and switch, give you grape juice and crackers. How can you read something from something so holy that you say is so holy and then you disavow exactly what you read? You do something exact opposite of what you read. And then you'll say, you are wiser than God. How can you possibly be wiser than God when he told you to serve his flock, wine and unlimited bread? That was his rule. Now you want to be smarter than him. Let me give you two answers I got from preachers that I did not accept and I will not accept because I'm an educated man and I don't have to accept. One preacher told me, it's the fruit of the vine. And I said to him, if God wanted to say the fruit of the vine, he's wise enough to say the fruit of the vine. How can you speak for God? So I disavowed that. And the next preacher told me, well, it's because people are drunk. God knows this condition of this world. He knows people are drunk or whatever else. And he made his rules. He didn't give a damn whether people are drunks. That's not what he said in communion. 
And there's one other thing I want to touch on with y'all. Joel Osteen, he does not preach from the Bible. He is a prosperity preacher, nothing more. And that is wonderful if it works for you. It is wonderful to go hear a prosperity preacher if it works for you. I'm not against Joel Osteen. I'm just telling you the truth. He does not preach from the Bible. So all the people who really go to church, Joel Osteen's church, really don't want to hear preaching from the Bible. They just want to hear feel-good talk. God is going to bless you. Keep the faith. Speak positive. All of that is he's a motivational speaker. Joel Osteen is not a preacher. He's a motivational speaker who used the Bible in his motivational speaking. If y'all don't know, that's what he is. He is not a preacher. Ask him to preach from revolution. Ask him to really preach you a sermon and see what you get. You're going to get feel good. My mama had cancer. My daddy this. We here to hear about the Lord. Supposedly our Savior Jesus Christ. You understand? That's what we're supposed to be here to hear. But we seem to hear all this feel good speak. When he ever going to speak from revolution and really preach it. Have you ever heard Joel Osteen ever preach a whole sermon from the Bible? Everything he's going to tell you a joke when it starts. So we all there just to feel good. We ain't really there for religion. We there to heal Joe Osteen, give you a pep talk. That's what you're there for. Because he ain't preaching nothing from the Bible. Just to, just to, just to say that, run it on. I ain't trying to hold you long because I want to keep you. But I also want to give you some facts about this Christianity religion. It is not something that came to you. It was beaten into you. And most blacks who still worship it, like my mother, is used to having seen niggas being beat with Christianity in them. So they're so stuck in it because it's been beating us. I tried to tell my mother, but I couldn't convince her. My father didn't try to tell her. She was just like one of the ones didn't care for Malcolm X. Why? I don't know. If you want to care for somebody and I tell y'all, please go look at I'm Not Your Negro, who sits up there and conditions you. Not he conditions you to be spit on, kicked on, shit on, slapped, sick the dogs on, whatever this white man want to do to you. Allow him to do it. And my question was, and so nobody never asked Martin Luther King back in that day, how long are we supposed to do this? We've been doing this shit for 400 goddamn years and ain't nothing changed. How long are we supposed to do this? What's the time frame, brother? Could you tell us? And that's why I felt so strongly about Malcolm X all my life. I've always felt strong about that brother. He's always been in my soul with the things that he said. That is what hit my soul, not letting white folks misabuse and shit on me and treat me like anything which they had already been doing for over 400 years. So that's how long, he ain't gave no date. Now Martin Luther King is dead and gone. What would have been the expiration date of being mistreated in such a way? I just like to ask all of you all, and I've never got an answer from all these big time preachers, Creflo Dollar, T.D. Jakes, uh, Jesse Duplatt, Kenneth Copeland. I asked them all, tell me who started the churches to drinking grape juice. Because you all preach right out of the Bible that it should be wine and unleavened bread, and I keep getting grape juice. Because some big time preacher, or are y'all scared to answer it because you can't answer it? Like most questions in the Bible, when Jesus sat there and asked all the wise men sitting up there talking, he asked them one question. If I, Jesus said to him, I'll answer your question if you answer mine. He asked them motherfuckers a question that none of them could answer. Same question I'm asking all these old fake ass jack leg preachers. Who started you to serve in the church grape juice and crackers? You take his word more than God because you're doing it. You're doing what that other whoever taught you to serve the church grape juice and crackers. You're doing it and you read before you serve us grape juice and crackers that it should be wine and unleavened bread. 
Tell me why it's not wine and unleavened bread to anybody. Because the Catholic Church still use wine. They ain't that far off base sitting up here telling you something and then right in your face doing exactly opposite. So I'm not going to hold you too much longer. I just want to talk about this religion thing and how you got it and what it took from you. It didn't give you anything. It took everything from you. It took your dignity. It took your land. You came here to be a slave to work for the white man to make him this incredibly rich which you see in America. That all comes from black man work. Building the White House, D.C., all the monuments. White folks didn't work by back then. They gave orders. They didn't do shit. They didn't pick no cotton. They didn't do anything but put a whip on your back to pick it. And now here it is, 2021. We didn't have this great white supremacist president and you niggas still running behind Christianity. And let me show you how sad this thing really is. And I'm going to let you all go. And y'all tell me what y'all think. Donald Trump then turned all these some bitch ass jack leg preachers into parking lot pimps. And they don't even see it. They parking lot pimps holding service out in the parking lot. Can you believe that? From the church to the parking lot. Wow. And they ain't got no problem with that because they want your money. They'll come from the church to the parking lot every day if you're going to come up there and give them 10% of your money. Let me give you one more thing and I'm out of here. I just had to read this off to y'all because God told me to tell it to you. If you don't hear, you can't say that you didn't hear because you heard it from me. Understand this. It is more than one way to tie but preachers never tell you that. Every time they open up tithe, they want 10% of your money. But there is more ways to tithe besides giving your money. Understand that. But have you ever heard a preacher stand up there and say, when it's tithe, and then ask for, I know we all don't have money and I'm humble, but you can also tithe this way if you don't have money. They don't even take the time to put it in their heart to tell you that. I understand we all ain't got money, and I pray that you get some. But due to the fact you ain't got none, this is how you can tie. They won't even tell you that because they so money hungry, all of them, all of them. And straight out of the book they preach, it tells you the gate is narrow and the way is straight. Understand that. And I'm through with it. Here's my last contradiction. I'm through with this Bible. You tell us all to be fruitful and multiply. That's what it says in the Bible. Be fruitful and multiply. What do the Catholics preach say? God said be fruitful and multiply to replenish this earth. Catholic priests say they so celibate they don't want no pussy. All they gonna do is play like they so clean and celibate and fuck your son. This is what they gonna do. Let me take your son on a retreat. Good old Catholic priest. Take him right there on a retreat to fuck him. This is what they have been doing since the 1800s. And we ain't even woke up to that. We won't even own up to that. The first Pope just came out and said, it's wrong to talk about gay people when that's all they've been all their life. What you think, all your politicians, all of them have been in the closet gay. All of them, their wives accepted it, all of them. Even I hate to say it, that man who ran for governor down here, gay, and you see his wife accepted it. It's a tragedy. Now he couldn't come out like my man out of Indiana and just say he gay. You got the front and be down low. Andrew, what, what was his name that day? He ran for governor down here against the Santos. Andrew Gillian. Andrew Gillian. Now he's in the closet, get busted all out on camera. White boy fucking him in the ass. He done passed out. White boy done threw a towel over him. Blood every goddamn where. Peels every goddamn where. But now you want to be down low instead of telling motherfuckers from the beginning like that boy out of Indiana that you is gay. 
ain't nothing wrong with it. Be honest about it. It ain't, you don't have to be down low anymore. Come out and be honest about it and let the people know the truth. Ellen DeGeneres did it. Came right out on the TV show, say I'm gay. If I lose the TV show, if I lose it all, so be it. It's who I am. And I respect Ellen DeGeneres for that. That's one of the things I truly respect her for coming out saying who she is. And it's the same thing about that old pussy-ass eating motherfucking Robin Roberts on Channel 7. One of the most pussy eatingest motherfuckers out there. You understand? Same thing with Robin Roberts. You understand? Come on out, say you gay, you married to a white woman, and it's all right. But still, with your pussy eating ass, don't be dogging Chris Brown and our black stars and celebrities. Because you eating white pussy every night and every day, feeling like you some motherfucking queen because you eating white pussy. So let's be real about this shit. And I agree with what Paul Mooney said. And it is truer than it can be. And I, Paul Mooney is my man. I love Paul Mooney. He's a hero of mine because he tells the truth. And anybody tell the real truth, I admire and respect Paul Mooney because he tell it like it is and don't hold back on these hunkies. I love that. I love that brother because he tell it exactly how it is. When we were slaves, them hunkies wanted us in the house. Now we free. We can't even come in their neighborhood. I'm going to leave y'all on that and let y'all check Paul Mooney out for himself because he's very well to speak for himself. I just love the things he said. I'm out. This is real true street crime. I had to say this because it was on my chest to say it. Whether I get one view or no views, I really don't care about views on this. It's about the black existence and the black struggle. That's what this is about. Damn a view. I don't care. Don't nobody watch it. I put it out there and said the truth for what the truth is. And that's it. Christianity has enslaved us. The white man came to Africa, gave us the Bible and took all the land and left us this worthless Bible. That's what he did. So this is real true street crime. Check Brittany Simmons out there, a wonderful young lawyer out there. Check Jelani's catering out. We finna start doing mock mom eating. I got a world-class chef. He going to dress up, put it on, bring it out, sit it down for me. And I'm going to sit down and lay a story out while we eat lunch, breakfast, or dinner. You understand? We're going to do some mock bomb eating when you all like to eat and talk. And we don't have to just talk about my story. We can pick subjects and just talk about life if you all like. We're going to try it out and see what you like. I won't know what you like till I try it. So I'm going to try mock bomb eating. Delani's catering is going to be my chef, laying it down, lay it down for me, bring it out like a chef, play it, put it on the table, and we're going to start kicking it from now. I've got a world-class chef, and we finna put him to work, mock bomb eating. Understand that? We coming. Mock bomb eating, 420 style. So like, subscribe, share. I am Eddie Baby at Instagram. Check the fine attorney, Brittany. Brittany Simmons out. Wonderful young attorney. Check her out. She's coming. And as I always say to you all, I don't like to hold you. Go over to Crime Town Spotify. It's a podcast. And check out Kingpin's Kids. And I'm going to be seeing a lot of you all. <laughs>